Oh, hey guys, how you doing today? Cold day today. Cold day today. It's February 20th. We're in the heart of it. They keep telling me it's going to warm up from here, but that groundhog came out. Didn't see its shadow, or saw its shadow? I don't know. Whichever one is going to make it six more days, or uh, spring comes early. Oh, wow. I got my facts all over the place on that one. <laughs> so it's supposed to get, get warmer. I'm looking forward to it. Let's bring on the summer. Let's get rid of this horrible coldness. Oy vey, living in Canada, I tell you what. All right, what's banging around my head today? Um, pipelines, pipelines and blockades. Huge pipelines, blockades, news. Nothing seems to be whipping people up more than these uh, First Nations protests and these First Nations uh, defenses against the sort of encroachment of capitalism. The uh, Anytime I'm online, I'm looking through comment sections, going through Reddit, any of that kind of stuff. It really does seem like it's bringing out the absolute worst in Canada and Canadians. People who are literally just saying, just go onto First Nations land, right? That's not Canadian land, that's First Nations land, and just remove those people. And there is a not insignificant segment of the population that's clearly supporting this idea that we should disenfranchise these people and plow oil and pipelines through their native territory. It's absolutely vicious and it's absolutely brutal. And it's and if you're living in a world where you think that's not happening and that there are not people who are supporting that idea, you're delusional. And you need to wake up. You need to come out of it. Because there are definitely people who are completely fine with the idea of disenfranchising an entire nation of people if it means a slightly more comfortable life for themselves in expectation and theory. Doesn't even need to be real. They can just sort of say like, haha, my life is better because their life is worse. And that's good enough. Uh, meanwhile, these the, the thing that's really fascinating about this whole blockade, the thing that really makes, makes my ears prick up is how the media is reporting it. They're doing everything they can. They're bending over backwards in order to frame this any other way than as a climate change issue. Uh, the, the government itself, the liberal government, has remained completely silent uh, on what this blockade is about, who anybody is actually doing. They're being very careful not to identify individuals, to uh, create a celebrity that can come out of this, a single voice that perhaps the populace could listen to, pay attention to, be persuaded by. They're doing a very good job, the media is doing a very good job um, eliminating the voice of the protesters. The protesters are just this amorphous mass uh, that is largely voiceless in the media. And that is by design, without a doubt. Where's the interviews with any of the protesting organizers? Any of the protesting organizers? Where are the interviews? Where are the conversations? Where's the debate? Where's anybody talking to anyone on the picket line, finding out any information about any of this. It's nowhere. It's not prominent. It's not focused. What is being focused on is treating this as a, uh, as a land rights issue, which in a way, I shouldn't say in a way, it is a land rights issue. The First Nations people have the rights to use the land as they see fit. It's their land. We can't just go in, remove them, or ignore them. Uh, I mean, we, we could, like physically, we could physically go do that if we're okay with being fascists. 
which large segments of our population are okay with us being fascists. As long as it's us being the fascists, we're okay with it. The, the government, to, the government, the corporate media, everyone who is responsible for informing us about this subject are doing everything they can to explicitly focus on things like land rights, which are in play, certainly, to focus on police responsibility, to focus on the political drama of uh, Andrew Scheer standing up and saying, we should clear these protesters out. We should end this blockade. <coughs> Because Andrew Scheer is a piece of shit and a fascist who lost the election for a reason. The, the liberal government has their hands tied. Because they know what this protest is about. This is about the looming threat of climate change. I, I keep saying it, I'll say it over and over and over again. What happened to Australia is going to happen here. What happened to Australia will happen here. If we don't get ahead of it, if we don't stop this madness, if we don't stop this lunacy, walk into a forest, it's going to light on fire. If you think that I'm lying, look at Australia. The exact step-by-step -step procedure that happened in Australia will unfold here if we just keep our heads in the sand if we don't pay attention, and if we just let things unfold this way. And so these protesters are going out, standing in front of railways, standing in the way of construction equipment, and saying, we will not let you move this oil. We will shut this production down. We will make it pointless for you to even mine this stuff. We will make it pointless for you to pump this out of the ground. We will make this a complete waste of your time. And we will do this by throwing our bodies in the way of the machinery. We will grind your machine to a halt with our bones if we have to because you are killing us. And there's this... And so, it's absolutely, uh, uh, absolutely important that the media remains absolutely silent about what these protests are about. They cannot report them honestly. They cannot report them for what they are, which is an attempt by, led by the First Nations people, by the youth, by protest movements coming together, and all of these forces attempting to meet the sociopathic capitalist class who is sacrificing us at the altar of their own hubris and greed so that they can have extra numbers in an account somewhere while the rest of us are going to have our homes burnt down around us, our water poisoned, and our air unbreathable. This, and this isn't hyperbolic stuff. I'm not, I'm not tipping over. If you think I'm being hyperbolic when I, when I talk this way, if you think I'm fear-mongering, you are out to lunch. It is time to wake up. You're a person who's literally on the beach when, the, when a Nazi force rides up going, well, there's no problem here. Time to wake up, time to join in, time to participate, time to join the war effort because that's what this will take. And this is the reason why Trudeau has not pulled the switch on clearing any encampments clearing any blockades because he understands at least unlike a chucklehead like Shear, who spends all his time in boardrooms talking to oil executives about how to fleece the populace 
Trudeau has actually gone and talked to normal, everyday, regular people. He's actually talked to these uh, uh, individuals. He's gone to the rallies, right? He's seen with his own eyes on the ground the energy that exists. And he understands that clearing those blockades with violent force is an act of war. It's class warfare, and he understands that. And he understands that he's on the side of the rich, but he's not gonna pull the switch. Because if he pulls the switch on that and just says, well, I guess we're fascists, and clears out these encampments using force, then that's all that they'll be, that's the only language they will be permitted to use from then on. And the country will divide itself very sharply, very quickly. It will, and it will not be a pretty event. You've got people like me, right? I'm a retail worker. I work pretty normal job. I do my best. I pay attention to what's going on around me. I try to support my community. I try to care about what's going on and I try to survive. And I swear to you, <clears throat> if Justin Trudeau clears out that encampment, I'm gonna be marching up and down these streets saying that we are in a state of high war. Our government is assaulting its citizenry. Our government is attempting to destroy itself and everything around it. Because that's what climate change is going to mean that's what climate change is going to do. And it's time to stop deluding ourselves. It's time to stop pretending like that's what's, uh, that that's not happening. <clears throat> I'm talking to people now who are just desperate to keep the oil flowing. They're just desperate to keep all of this madness continuing. Keep letting uh, uh, little plastic toys get made, single use plastic keep getting made. Let's cover everything in plastic and send plastic in plastic so that plastic can do plastic things. Let's, let's keep uh, uh, burning this stuff so we can commute three hours a day. And now the people who are pro oil extraction are starting to say absolutely insipid things. Like, oh, well, how are you gonna heat people's homes? That's not what the conversation's even about. Like, it's truly and honestly, like if we're to a point where we're worried about whether or not people's homes can be heated, then we can talk. I'm talking about getting rid of plastics. I'm talking about stopping these three hour ridiculous commutes. I'm talking about why are people permitted to fly 300 kilometers a day in the air and destroy our atmosphere doing it? What is this insane activity that we're permitting people to do? Why are we allowing this poison to destroy us? It's absolutely insane that we're still continuing along this line and we're still allowing these corporations and allowing these companies to just pour this vitriol into our society and allowing it to divide us. That's their, that's their greatest tactic is that they they pretend as though this is all a make work project, a job. Well, what about the jobs? And when you actually look at the structure of how that works, it's a form of hostage taking. They're not on our side. They're not trying to help us. They're trying to extract as much wealth as they can and they abandon people after they're done. This absolutely insane situation that we're allowing to occur around us like there was a poll that came out recently this is how the manipulation works there's a poll that comes out shows most canadians are against the idea of a blockade they don't like a blockade and most canadians don't understand what the blockade represents they don't understand that the blockade was a blockade against climate change in order to grind it to a halt. The, the number one thing that we could do to actually stop all this from happening is to just jam ourselves into the path of all of these distribution networks that were erected in order to make life, life easier 
for billionaires. Who cares about billionaires? No one should care about, bil we should care about billionaires exactly as much as they care about us, which is not at all. If, if, if our deaths make them money, then we die. And it is that simple. And so Justin Trudeau now is in a pickle because he can't clear the encampments. He doesn't want to declare war against the populace openly, not the way the conservatives rabidly and sociopathically desire. Boy, do they want to. They would love to go in there and just clear those camps out. Just do a Nazi salute on the way in and the way out, why don't you, right? Why not kidnap their kids again and throw them into residential schools while you're at it? The, this absolutely insipid, ridiculous position that says, oh, well, they're breaking the law, we should arrest them. The Holocaust was legal, uh, apartheid was legal, the, the continued distribution of a poison that's destroying us is legal. We need to stand in its way. We need to break the law. We, because the law is wrong. The people who are supporting it are either delusional or outright evil. Who, and they just need to be stopped. And the way to stop them is to begin acts of severe civil di disobedience. Here's a plan. Here's an idea. If you're worried, like if you're a, a work person, right? Maybe you don't have support in your environment, in your workspace to actually go on strike. You know, you need to eat. The system is set up to enslave you. And they say, well, if you don't work, then we're not gonna pay you. It means you don't eat. So you have to go to work because you're a slave like the rest of us. And you go to work because if you don't, you don't eat. Well, what you do is you say to your friends, Hey, get, gather 20, 30 people together, come into this space and occupy it. I'm here, I'm working, right? I'm, I'm working away, making the money, right? Can't do anything, why? Because it's occupied, right? Just get these people to mill around your store, cause problems, gum up the works, right? Don't even do anything harassing or illegal or anything. Literally go stand in line. Just go stand in line, right? And then when you get to the till, take as much time as you possibly can. Just take as much time as you possibly can and then resolve it and give them no money, right? You wanna slow capitalism down? You wanna, you wanna stand in the way, right? Gather some of your friends, go into a retail environment and take up everybody's time. Just waste everybody's time for as long as you possibly can. Gum up the works as much as you possibly can. Make things as big a problem for everyone as much as you can. And if you got the balls, tell them why you're doing it. Because this is where we're at now. We're at a point now where it literally is going to take acts of massive civil disobedience, like the blockade, in order to stop and make these fucking sociopathic capitalists actually stop and think about what it is they're doing which they won't that's what we're talking about on their deathbeds they will believe that they were right all right guys on that happy note i wish you all well fight the good fight have fun